So to today's topic is going to be the convolutional neural net. So the previous one was the, I would say, ANN. So it's artificial. Now we have convolutional in front of it. So I'm going to explain what the convolution means first and what's the benefit, what's pros and cons and why we need and things. And finally, it explains the, the structure of convolutional neural net. So like I said, convolution is the first you have to understand what convolution is. So it's a integral or sum of the product of two signals or functions after one is reversed and shift. And so for discrete, it will be summations, or for continu continuous signals or functions, it will be integral. So let me, actually there's two similar operations in there. The first one is cross correlations, and the second one is gonna be the convolutions. And here in, in, in cross correlations and the convolutions are different, they are different. So let me explain with this, the animations. Suppose we have, let me see, maybe like X of one and X of two. Oh, here, let me write it down. Say this is uh, X of N and H of N. Then I'm gonna show you the animations. So this one is cross correlations. So here I fix X of N, I, for H of N, I'm shifting it and take the integral of intersections and I shift it again. For each shifting point, I calculate it. So red one is H of N. So this one is how we get it out of cross correlations. Now, the only difference is I reversed, H of N is reversed and shifting it, and we compute the integral of intersections. That's the convolution. I hope you guys see or understand how the either cross correlations or the convolution operations they are working okay in in in, in mathematical representations for discrete case so we have x and h and this one is it's it's a uh, here is reversed and shifted it and we do summations. For continuous case, it's gonna be T minus tau, X tau, D tau. That's, that's uh, these are convolutions, okay? But this is how we represent the convolution operations in the, the, in the mathematical way. But I want you to, to take a look at these, the animations to, to visualize and to see this is cross correlations and these are the convolutions. In here, I'm gonna explain the convolutions in one dimensional space and in two dimensional space, I have two. So first one, let's do the first one D convolutions. I'm, what I mean by one D convolutions, the convolutions in one dimensional space. And actually this is cross correlation. So what I'm going to explain is it, it's a cross correlations. So suppose we have inputs like that. And don't worry about what's the input and corners. This is a, this is X of N. 
and this is h of n. And I'm going to call it this is input and this is kernels. And the output is so for the outputs, what I'm going to do for element wise, I'm going to do multiplication. So it will one, nine, zero, and do I, and after that, right after that, I'm do summations. So it will be plus seven. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to shift it. Then I'm going to repeat the computation again, six zeros and zeros and do summations. I will get nine. Right. The, why we have nine, the value of nine over here, because I shifted it one. So I got here. So these will be the elements and repeat it like that. Good. And the reason why I say this is cross correlations, actually, if this is the con corners for the true, actually for, for, for convolutions, that's what I'm supposed to do. So like that. So instead of that, it would be eight. But I didn't flip it. I didn't make it reversed. So actually, this is what I just do animations is this cross correlations. And let me see how do you implement it in, 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 in the 1D convolutions in the Python? Suppose we have kept uh, is so n is like that we have so axis like that we do if you do so this one is if i plot it it will be purse right so it's one and zeros if i do convolutions with itself that means i do so in numpy we have convolution of formations in the function or method is is embedded so it's x and x, what I can do is where this is x of n, and this is another, and we do. Uh, in this case, it's a, it's a it's a symmetric, so that's why this cross cross uh, cross correlations and the convolutions they are identical in this case. So I use then we get this. So let me make another animation so that you guys can have better understanding. That's why we have this kind of figures. Let me show it again. Okay. And just remember that uh, some of the applications that we can think of out of either cross correlations and convolution is it's a smoothing. It's a smoothing. How do you, so when, in general, if you collect the data from the sensors, probably we have, so I would say we have some noise on it. So here, suppose this is original and smooth. But for the measured signal, it's going to be corrupted right? because of these noise edit. One way can we, one way we can get rid of noise is we, we do filtering. And there are so many different, I mean, there, there are many different types of filters so that we can get the, the curved signals, make it curved signals smooth. One of them is one of the famous one is moving average filters. What we do is we unweighted mean of previous M, M data points. What do I mean by that? Say, suppose we have, 
how do I say? So here is n, n minus one, n minus two. Say, suppose, for example, if in that case, say we have that what we can do. So here, we just take this value is gonna be, so we say, yeah, it's gonna be yeah. and just in here, if you in the next data points, you're gonna think of another three points. So that's why we call it is it is uh, is uh, the the move the filter is gonna move so it's moving every filters so that's easiest way that you can think of but another way that you can the way that you can take a look at this one is you can you can write it that way with convolution operation operators like that so in in this one is same as in you do convolutions this is this is a convolution notation notation that you usually is a conventional way and suppose this is h of n so you can think of uh, think of moving average as 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 uh, you do convolutions with this specific filters like that And this one is the same as you apply the low pass filters in time domain, because we do convolutions in time. So this is one of the examples they say, suppose this is the piecewise original smooth thickness, say it's X of N. Now I add noise on it. So it will be, this one is X N plus noise. And I do, Suppose this one is filters H of N, filters. And as you can see, the way that I did is probably we have five of them. So I guess this is the filter that I designed. And from I'm doing this one and this one, I do convolutions and the, what I got this is what I get. So it's kind of just, so this one is the original and this is a corrupted one. Using that one with this, this kind of the moving errors filters, that's how we got it. As you can see here, this gets smooth over here. But the downside is this one is the, the shock. A abrupt changes in the original one, but that's also we we got uh, it's a smoothed. This is unwanted smooth, but that's something that we cannot do. But at least this part was uh, we we did denoising it. We just got get rid of some noise on it. So that's one of the examples that we can think of in 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 the smoothing or the convolutions in time the next one is we got this it's a uh, it's a uh, detections and think about it starting from the original and smooth signals and was i add noise on it in uh, in this time the purpose is not as get not the smoothing one in this case i want to detect i want to detect at this moment, which is in the original scene, there's abrupt changes, something that I want to detect at that, the right moment. And here, what I can think of, as you can see, this one is, say this one is my filters or corners. You say filter or corners. Think about here. If these two values are similar, 
that means say suppose we have say in in two consecutive data points suppose i got the similar values and if i do convolutions then what i do is i mean i, I you can reverse it or not, it doesn't matter, but I will do reverse it. You get almost zeros. So what do you mean if I do this kind of filters, if the values are consecutive values are similar enough, I will get low values out of convolution operations. But on the other, on, if you have, say here is, is like almost one and negative one, so what I can do, do convolutions like that. Then I'm going to reverse this guy. Then I got one, right? So in this case, I indicate in almost zeros and we have if I take the, the magnitude, I will get high values on it. So let me show you the outcome of convolutions with these, like that. So this is how I got, what I got. As you can see, are almost zeros. And at this moment, you have high values. So we can make conclusion that there is something happened in, 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 in the original signals so we guys can detect. So we call it this. So what I'm saying is that from these two, pre, these two examples, we have, if we have, even though we have the same, the corrupted signal is by having, having different filter design, we get different, we will extract different information out of it. Sometimes it will be get smooth or sometimes it will detect. So I implement it here. Suppose, say, I got, IMU sensors, which I just uh, just get IMU sensors to to measure the the accelerations, and this one is measured outputs. I mean, maybe measured inputs, and as you can see, it's very noisy. It's gonna be, and here is I do filter to do smoothing. So let me show you. So the, the top one is that as you can see there's some noise on it, but in the bottom one, as you can see, it's very smooth. Because we, we implement the smoothing the corners for the for for, for and two convolutions in the real time, in time domain. And the next example here is I want to detect the edges like that. And it's, it's again, it's from noise on it. And how do you detect, let me see, I'm gonna show you how to detect the sharp changes on it. Smooth, there is no. And if I make, as you can see, okay, I hope this, let, let me show you this one again. Just looking at the bottom one. So, let me, here, as you can see, there's the sharp changes here. Here we see a lot of changes, but it's smooth. That's why we don't have any, we did not detect, we, so we didn't detect it at all, okay? So these are 
two famous applications for the convolutions having different the filter design in time domain. Any questions so far related on convolution in, in, in 1D, one dimensional space? Okay, if you don't, I'm going to move on to the next topic. It's going to be now what I'm going to do is I will do convolutions in two dimensional space. And the most famous the example in two dimensional spaces will be the image on it. So I'm going to, I'm going to uh, explain what the image is first. So, so image is our numbers. So this one here we call it pixels. Pixels. And this one is the image that we are supposed to look, but the, for computers probably have the numbers or values in each pixels. So if that's eight bits, probably it's values from like this one, or sometimes we normalize it from zero to one, and these are. Yeah. So what the computer sees, it's just matrix. So it's image, are same as matrix. Okay. So the image just matrix of numbers like that. And for, for colored images, as you might heard, this is RGB grid, red, green, blue images. That means we have, we have, this one is, we have like one, two. So this is for R, green, and blue. So we have three matrix matrices that's colored image okay. so that's the the pick those three pixels are represent the same information in in but it's have the three different colors on it and suppose to say this is the original image and the r and green and blues and here's it's the gray image means i have See here, it's it's a uh, just the single image. So it's uh, just matrix. So I'm gonna use the gray image a lot because it's we don't now we don't have to we don't have to think about these ways. So that's for the gray image. Now I, I, I talk about the images. Now let's move on to what will be the convolution, convolutional operations in two-dimensional space. So convolution on image on it. Like say again, it's it's a filters and corners. So we do this. Let me see. The convolution can be viewed as element-wise multiplication by a matrix. What do you mean by that? So Let's say this is the input image we have. If the corner is the filters, in this case, say it's three by three, then the value of here, the, how we can decide the value of here is for, for pixel wise, we do what I say. So it's a, so this one, how I say X1, H1, X2, H2, X3, H of, then we do it's uh, H, H of nine, we we'll get, put it here. That's the Convolutions. In, actually, it's a, again, it's a cross correlation in in two dimensional space. 
So let me so let me show you the of the animations like that. So the input images are fixed, and three by three corners in this in this case is gonna be is moving sweeping around, right? So we call it shifted it, and in this case corner is like will be that's the corner in this case. Okay, I guess now you guys can understand how the convolution in two dimensional space work is working it and this will be you, you can think of this as output. And output is another matrix. Or we can think of another gray image. So another way that you can look is, I think this one is, is more clear to compute the value over here. And to compute the value over here, right next, and the corner is gonna be move, you compute that. And over here, what we can do, so I'm gonna shift it again like that. So it will be like, all right. So let me show you some of the examples of it. So with this input, we have say corner one like that. So or maybe say this is, I'm going to shift it like that. And I will get another matrix or image. What, what, what's, what's, what will be the output is gonna be? What the output is gonna be? Any, any guess? Suppose we have this kind of corners on it. And think about the edge, edge detections that I, that I show you in one dimensional space, application, the application that I show you in one dimensional space. So what now I have nine elements. I will do the matrix element wise. I will do matrix multiplications. I will get one point and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to shift it. I'm going to shift it. I will get compute another, the pixel point like that. So I will do this. And what will be the outputs? And what about the, this one? If we do this kind of the colors, let's let me think of let's think about this. Suppose you have. Let me show you. Let me show you if. If the pixel is like that, what would be the output? Suppose the, the nine values are, are similar. Then if we do convolutions with this, probably the output, because as you can see, if I would say, I don't know. So if that's the values, if I do convolutions, then here it's uh, if I do like that, it will be one. If I do then zeros, if I do like that, do summations and it's almost zeros. So that means if don't don't have any, if that's the, the values on the image, if that's in, in this, the corner size of those values are, uh, kind of uniforms, the outputs of this, this kind of corner filters is will be the output is almost zero. What about, what about, what about, what about this, like that? We do have, 
abrupt or sudden changes in in x x axis or directions and as you can see over here we will detect the edges and what about what about let me show you like that if we have the changes in the y directions over here as you can see in these directions if we do it will be, again it's almost zeros you see what i'm doing it so this one if we do the convolutional operations with this kind of corners probably i'm thinking that is it will be to filterings on or emphasize in the abrupt changes in the x directions let me show you so this with the outputs and just take a look at here right as you can see there is is highlighted but over here is almost you cannot look at here then the next my next question is what about this in the same fashions that I can say that these filters are gonna detect the abrupt changes in the y directions or emphasize the y directions. Let's see here. Let me see that's in y directions. Let me show you here. This one. What about what about? In the y directions. Mm. So having different colors, we get different effect on the output image. That's what I what I want to say that. So another way that I can say is that if you want to add the special effect on the input image so that I can get the desired outputs, I need to design the right corners for that. So we need to design it. So how do you implement it in, in these things? Again, let me show you that. So if that's the image with noise on it, I want to do the smoothing. So here, what I did is that's the corner that I have. Then it's a smoothing effect, as you can obviously you can see. Let me show you the output image on it, like that. So it's just by comparison between these, and this is noise, and this is smooth. And if you think this is not good enough, then one, one thing that you can do, you can increase the size of filters. Say it's, it's, uh, it's a five by five or nine by nine. So if you think about more, say here is you, in this case, you consider only nine pixels, value in the nine pixels. In this case, it's 25 and 81. The, the fixed values, then you take the mean value of that. It's so it will be gets much smoother so that's something that you can the is there will be the hyper parameters for the size of corners and let's think about this uh, we have this kind of inputs and suppose this is 15 by 15 the corners with kind of this kind of the bear shape or you can think of Gaussian. If you have this kind of filters applied it into input image to convolutions, then you will get this kind of blurred image on it. So it's blurred. So for the inputs, I can add a lot of different effect on it, having different 
filter design. Then the, the question is, how do you find right corners? We learned many different corners make specific effect on the image. That's true. I do filterings and smoothings and blurrings and things like that. But let's apply an opposite approach. The opposite means that we're not gonna, we don't wanna, we are not designing corners, but we want, we want learn the corners from data. If we have input image and the output image, there will be the training data, pair the training data set. And as we learn, and it's, it's, uh, it's artificial neural net or neural net or deep learning was able to learn the features as well, right, from the data set. So what I want to do is that now these are the given. I want to, I want to ask, want to ask probably deep learning to figure it out, figure out the right corners. That's what I want to do. Because we know that it's, it's uh, using deep learning frameworks, we can learn the feature extraction from the data set. That's the motivations that we have with two dimensional image the inputs input and outputs. So let's learn the visual features. Now let's think about the, now is we know what the convolution is. And let's uh, think about the motivations for the CNN structures. And suppose the, our, the goal is to, 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 to find out whether we have so let's see, let's say it's object detections. Now we want to know, I want to classify that in, in this, the input image, what kind of object in it, we, we want to figure it out. As, but these, we know that this bird. But the problem is in the image, I mean, for, for, uh, for us, like human beings, we, we know that there's a bird. It doesn't, it, regardless of the its locations, right? So it's, it's very occupied in the local area and look the same in different part of the image. We should construct neural net which exploit these properties. So that, that's the motivations. So say these, because we know that these are the pixels like that. And what, what we, it's like what we did for the MNIST data so we can flattening out, flatten, and then we add to add multi-layer perception for classifications. But the problem is, say in with this kind of the image we train, say so we got the high accuracy outcomes. But once we have this the bird is like located here, then as you can see, it's a flattened, it will be it's gonna be totally different. So for sure that it will fail to 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 classify or for the object detections. And so it seems it does not seem the best that we can do. Like so, ANN is not the best. And another reason is that, say we have flattening this way, then here, say in these pixels, say it's A and B. Here is A and B. In over here in the flatten A and B, the pixel values are adjacent, but in the original input image, A and B are this far away. Those two are totally like has nothing to each other. But over here it's adjacent. So I think it, it does not make use of the fact that we are dealing on the images inputs. So that's why that's the kind of motivations that 
ANN is not the proper structures for, for dealing with the input image. So let me see. The, our input is we say this is in two dimensional image and for fully connected like that. So it's, we call it in the way we did it in ANN is, is fully connected. So we just flatten and here is the fully connected network. And again, what I said is no, there's is no uh, spatial information once we flatten out that. So we get rid of the, I think these are the key informations for the image, but somehow we're going to lose. So the spatial or organization of the inputs are destroyed by flattening process. And say we have like, and we are going to have 10,000 neurons and suppose we have 10 classic, maybe 100 classifications. Then these are the number of parameters and weights. So there are many, many, many parameters that we need to train and we need to learn from the data set. So obviously these are the key factors that make the, our, the, the classification network is, is, is not in, inefficient. So we think that how we're gonna use the special or spatial structures in the inputs to inform the architecture of the neural net. So that's the, and as you can see, that's the convolutional neural net for the motivations. And let, let's, here's the, the right moments that we want to combine convolutions and the neural net. And why don't we do like two convolutions in, so this one is input. And we will do convolutions. And one of another issue is that it's there's localities and these are the same class. It's a bird. So what we can do, we make the small mask, which is corners in this case. And instead of just take entire pictures in in, in the, and we just take the part, right? So if you have birds like here, we're going to identify it. So it's in localities that we have small mask, small size of mask or filter or kernels. And here I use different colors to indicate this will be the different, different different colors, but it turns out that if you just take this one is, let me see. So it's okay to use same mask, just detect the, the bird in this case. There's no reason that we have, have we gonna use different mask. So we call it it's weight sharing, because what we're gonna do, there will be the, the parameters that we need to estimate, we need to learn from the, the data set. So what I'm saying is that here, if you have, there will be the elements in the corners, right? Instead of for me to assign the right, the values for all the elements, I'm going to make it that's uh, and, and the TF dot variables. So let the test, let the deep learning is to figure it out too. And like that, and I'm going to shift it like that. So by having the mask shifted it, so now it, it doesn't matter of the, the location of the object. Right? That's we call it localities. And having doing the same mask and shifting, we're going to reduce tremendous number of ways that we need to estimate. So this is the key, the sentence that you, 
we are not designing the kernels and we are learning the kernels from the data set. So that's the key, the concept that you, the conceptual concept that I want you to understand. So let me, for deep artificial neural net, and I'm, I'm talking about 2Ds, but there is no way that I can draw. So this is, this is, is, is 1D space. And here, I'm going to show you the animation. This is kind of the, the typical way of ANS structures. And just think about the, the lines here. Think about number of weights and bias. There are so many. But for the CNN version of like here, that's kind of CNN structures. Now we have, you can think of it's, it's 1D or 2D, it doesn't matter. Now, now I'm going to shift it. I hope you guys to see what I'm trying to intend. So here we do weight sharings and this is local connectivities and this very sparse interactions. So just over here, up to here, it's uh, now we have from here, probably you can think of feature extractions. Now from here, you can think of as extracted features, feature vectors. Now I'm do to do classifiers, classifications, and to to extract the right features, we do convolutions, and we have for convolutions by having the convolutional structures. Those are the key advantage that the benefit that we can get it. It's weight sharings and local connectivities and have sparse information. Just looking at the number of weights that we need to estimate it. Having that, this one, right? So CNN is much the, the light structures for that. Because it's a, for, in, for the perspective of optimization perspective, it's a smaller searching space. So it's, we don't, we have very smaller number of weights and bias. Why we can do, because we are, because the prior information that we have is the input is image, which is very key. And I'm going to take that uh, prior information now having these kind of structures adapted. So that's the animation that you think. Now let's move on to, let's get in details for, so now we have, Suppose we have inputs like that. And the, the title is multiple filters and kernels and mask. If you have, say this is the first kernels, and if you do sweepings like that, let me change the colors. And sweeping like that, you will get another you can think of matrix or image. Now in the same inputs, let's say have second corners like that. Then we're gonna, I'm gonna do another sweepings and we get the second image. So number of corners and number of output matrices are the same. And let's say, think about it, say here, if you have in the, in the input image, there are many features that we need to extract. If we believe that, then you need add more filters. So each filter is probably this one will the say, for example, this will get like smoothing filters and this one probably the edge detections in the y directions and another one probably the detections in the x something like that right so what's the proper number of corners it really depends on the input image that you have and how 
the complex or what kind of number of features that you want to extract it, those kind of things you have to think of, you have to consider it when you design the number of like hyperparameters. For example, here is the number of filters or corners or mask. Now, another say here is, is uh, the first one. And the second thing is the, no, the channels. It, here is, say you have colored the image, which means that you have that kind of, right? And in that case, your mask is not like this one anymore. So your corner is like that. Say, say in this case, say, in that case, you have elements and do element wise multiplications and do summations, you get one value for each pixel. Okay. So I'm going to show you animations. So if that's, so we call it, these are tenors and there will be the, the shape or size of colors. And if I do get that and shift it, you get and again and again. Once we're done, I'm going to back like that. And this is very the key, the image that you need to visualize it for just to understand what kind of operations and the shape or structures is they you have to know to when you design the CNS structures. Okay. So just think about the the shapes like that. And you should these I should be the same. Now, if add more corners like that, now I'm gonna repeat this one to, to create another output. So D, the channel in the output is same as the number of corners. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's really confusing if you don't exact, if you, if you don't get it, it will be very, com it's, it will be very confused. You're gonna be very confused when you, especially when you implement it in Python. You have to, you have to know these kind of things. So let's see, let's see, let's deal with the shape. So, see, this is the input width and height and number of channels and the output and output width and height and number of output channels. And suppose we have this kind of the corner shape means that width and height and channels and the number of corners. So we know that this is corner size and C is the, the in and output is the output channels. And the number of parameters that you have to think about this. And here in number of parameters, right? And we have D corners of the earth. This is number of parameters for, for, for weight. What about the bias? We have bias and Bias is just number of D. Because that means we're gonna add this. So that's the number of bias. That's why the total number of parameters that we need to need to estimate is that. So that will be the right, number of parameters that we need to estimate. And for the weight, and these are the, for the bias.
So again, the first sentence, the kernel is not sweep, swiping across the channels. It just cross row and columns. What do you mean by that is that if you, if you get confused, probably you can think of, so there will be the, the kernels and probably like you would think of it and sweep in this way. No, it's, you don't sweep the mask through the channels, right? We don't do that. So it will be like, this will, this will be the, and let me see, there's, we refer to one of the channels generated by the component's activation map. So th this one is activation maps. And, Server area with input map that influence the components to open as a re receptive filters of, let me ask, let me, so for these pixels, the corresponding re receptive field, field of that is probably like these, in this case, right? It's uh, the, the, the sub area of the inputs that influence that components. And if you have more like these, then probably these will be the, the receptive fields. And one thing that you, it's, it's, it's gonna get, get smaller. That's why it's, it's a, you have a lot of pixels and you have, so it's a, compressed information over here. If we do repeat it, then we will do feature extractions. That's how the feature extraction work. Now the paddings and stride. The stride is the increment step size for convolution operations. Let's see, this one is Stride of two. I mean, I don't think I need to explain it by just looking at this animations prop. I mean, everybody can understand the meaning of the stride. Okay. By having, in this case, stride of two, we reduce the size of output map. Is, is, is five by five, the output is two by two. So the input is five by five, and two by two with, with the corner size like that. So what we did is from here, it's data compressions. Padding means that, let me ask, in this case, we have five by five and three by three corners. What would be the output size? If I do that or be the output size, size of the output. What do you think? So we have five by five, the input image, and there will be the corner size. Let me, What will be the size of output? What do you think?
Let's think about that. Having that, we'll get one pixel, right? Now I've shifted it, I will get another one. This way, okay. Let me move again. There is no what I'm doing it. So the answer is it's a three by three. And from as you can see from five by five, by having the convolution operations, the size is reduced. And the question is say somehow I want to I want to remain the size as an input and output and what kind of map well, I don't want to get the image output image gets I don't want to get that output image is smaller then I do paddings like like in this one I add zeros like that I do zero, zero paddings. I mean, there is no, I mean, zeros is just, just, there is no extra information added. I just add zeros. Now I, it became seven by seven, right? Now I do encounters with, with with the with the stride of one, that's what this animation is showing us. Yeah. Right. So it's again it keep special dimension constant cross filters. So it's artificially we fill the borders of the image, usually with the zeros. That's patterns. So let me show you that. It's with the five by five, that's the image. And we'll, I will do the patterns, I did patterns like that. These are the green one is padded and say with the stride of two, then with the color of this, and I would do like that. So this is, the, this is stride of two. So with this one, we're starting from five by five. To five by five, I add zero paddings and to two stride, I will get three by three. So, I mean, I, from this example, I want you guys to understand what the paddings and stride. Now, once we're done with that here, up to this point, I will fit it in, 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 in nonlinear activation functions because so far, what I did is a linear operations. So we do add again. Is we need to embed. We need to have nonlinear behaviors embedded in it. So probably here is tangent hyperbolics or sigmoid or or value functions, whatever. So we do nonlinear expressions. <laughs> 